Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly Channel. My name is John, and today I'm going to help you assemble your 8x17.5 outdoor storage shed. Before we get started, make sure the model number of your shed is listed in the description below. This video will follow the steps outlined in the assembly manual that comes with the shed. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the description below for a timestamp associated with each step. Your shed comes on a pallet in three separate boxes, so let's take a look at what you should have received. There are steps within this assembly that require two people, so be sure to have at least one other adult available to help. Before we get into the assembly process, let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need a 7 16 wrench, a 3 8 wrench, a rubber mallet, a box cutter, a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, needle nose pliers, a hammer, safety glasses, a ladder, and a drill. You may see us use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware. To make this easier, we're gonna use a 7 16 socket, a 3 8 socket, a Phillips head bit, vice grips, and a socket adapter. All lifetime sheds require a platform to be built on. We recommend building one out of concrete, but you can also build one from lumber. This video is meant to be used as a companion to the assembly manual and not a direct replacement. So for the best results, make sure to have the assembly manual on hand during the build. It's also crucial that you refer to the assembly manual to review the safety instructions for this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. All right, let's get started. This section will go over how to build the foundation of your shed. This video will focus on the assembly of the shed and not the foundation. So it's important that you refer to your assembly manual in section one to see how to properly build the foundation of your shed. Take two gutter channels and line up the holes in the ends of the gutter channel with the holes in the connector. Secure the gutter channel to the connector with the hardware. Be careful not to over tighten this hardware, otherwise the cap nuts could break. Line up the holes in the middle of the gutter channels with the holes at the end of the truss brace and add the hardware, making sure that the head of the bolt is on the inside of the gutter channels. To make tightening this hardware easier, I like to use a Phillips bit inside a pair of vice grips. Next, insert the truss rod into the connector and the truss brace and then secure with the two nuts. Only tighten this hardware enough so that the truss rod doesn't wiggle. Repeat the previous steps five more times for a total of six truss assemblies.
Take the two gable halves that are straight at the bottom, line them up in the middle, and secure with the hardware. Line up the holes in the screen with the holes in the vent, and then place it on the front side of the gable and secure with the hardware. There are two header bars, one that has two small holes in the middle and one that doesn't. The one you need for this step is the one that does not have small holes in the middle. Insert a plug into each end of the header bar. Line up the holes in the header bar with the divots in the gable and then secure with the hardware. Take the gable halves that have a curve at the bottom of them, line up the holes in the middle, and secure with the hardware. Line up the holes on the screen with the holes in the vent and then place on the front side of the gable and secure with the hardware. Take the other header bar and insert a cap into each end. Line up the holes in the header bar with the divots in the gable, making sure that the flat side of the holes is facing up and that the square dimpled hole in the middle is facing towards you. When adding the hardware to the center, make sure it's in this order and oriented like this. Insert a hinge tube into the round hole on the left door, which is the door with the Lifetime logo. On the opposite side of the door, make sure that this notch lines up with the holes on a door channel. Then slide the door channel onto the door, but before you do, make sure to put your deadbolts into the notches at the top and bottom of the door, making sure they're oriented like this.
Take the strike plate and place it on the door channel, making sure the holes line up. Place the door latch bracket over the strike plate like this and secure with the hardware. Be careful not to over tighten this hardware otherwise the cap nuts could break. Place the handle on the front side of the door and secure with the hardware. Take the right door and insert the hinge tube into the round hole on the edge of the door. On the opposite edge of the door, make sure the notch in the door lines up with the two holes on the door channel. Slide the door channel onto the edge of the door. Place the tabs on the thumb lever into the holes on the handle. Insert the handle into the front side of the door and then secure with the hardware on the back side. Place the door locking hardware onto the door or into like this. Add the bracket to the lever oriented like this. Then attach the spring to these locations. With the help of another person, connect the four panels together by lifting one panel up at a 45 degree angle, interlocking the tabs, and then laying it back down. Your door can go on either short edge. Decide which edge you want your door to go on and then insert the bushings into the round holes. Locate the divots on the edge of the floor panels and insert the hardware to secure them together.
on all the wall panels labeled AHD, add a wall support to the channel just to the left of the cutout at the top of the wall panel. Also make sure that the end of the wall support that has two holes close together goes at the top. Line up the holes in the support with the divots in the wall and secure with the hardware. Take the corner wall panel labeled AGY and insert the wall support into the channel on the edge, making sure that the two holes that are close together on the wall support are at the top. Take the corner wall panel labeled AGN and insert a wall support into the channel on the left edge, making sure that the two holes on the wall support that are close together go at the bottom. Take the window wall panel and insert the short wall support into the channel just to the left of the center, and then insert the hardware, but make sure to insert the hardware at an angle. Take the corner wall panel labeled AGY and place the tabs at the bottom of the wall panel into the cutouts on the floor panel next to this bushing. Slide the panel over to lock it into place. I'm comfortable using my foot, but if you're not, you can use a block and a rubber mallet. Lean the panel away from the floor, fold the panel in half, line up the tabs at the bottom of the wall panel with the cutouts on the floor. Then apply downward pressure to lock it into place. If you're having a hard time getting the tabs to click in, you can use a block under each tab as you apply downward pressure. Take a wall panel labeled AHD and insert the tabs into the cutouts on the floor panel and then slide it over to lock it into place. Make sure the line at the top of the wall panels are even and then secure the two panels together. The window wall panel can go on either long edge the instruction shows to put it right here, but we're gonna wait and put it closer to the back of the shed. Repeat the previous step, adding another wall panel labeled AHD. Continue adding wall panels labeled AHD along this edge of the shed. For this corner, add the corner wall panel labeled AGW using the same method as the first corner panel. Add two more wall panels to the back edge labeled AHD. Keep in mind these panels must be labeled AHD. For this corner, you'll need to use corner panel AGO.
Continue adding six wall panels labeled AHD to this side of the shed. Insert the corner wall panel labeled AGN to this corner. These holes in the corner wall panel represent the three different height settings you can choose for your shelf. Decide how high you want your shelf to go and then insert the brackets into the wall supports at the corresponding height. Take the shelf and fold the flaps of the ends up. Place the shelf on the brackets making sure that these notches go against the back wall. Attach your flaps to the corner wall panels. It may be helpful to have someone on the outside pushing against you to make the hardware go any easier. Now secure the shelf to the brackets. With the help of another person, take the left door and slide the hinge tube into the bushing, making sure that the hole at the end of the hinge tube lines up with the slit in the bushing. Then insert the cotter pin from the front side and expand the ends to secure it into place. Repeat the previous steps for the right door. Close the doors and with the help of another person, lift the gable that has a curve at the bottom of it onto the hinge tubes and secure to the wall panels with the hardware. Place a gap flap over the hinge tube at the top of the door and secure with the hardware. Take a truss and insert it into the cutouts closest to the gable that we just installed. With the help of another person, lift a roof panel onto the gable and into the gutter channel. You know the roof panel is in the correct position when the alignment nub on the roof panel lines up with the notch in the gutter channel. Secure the roof panel to the wall panel through the bottom four holes. Secure the roof panel to the gable through the bottom two holes. Secure the opposite edge to the truss through the bottom two holes. Uh. 
into the roof support into the notch on the gable and the notch over the truss. Finish securing the roof panel through the remaining three holes. Repeat the previous steps for the roof panel on the opposite side. Add another truss to the next set of notches at the top of the wall panels. Add two roof panels using the same method as before, except this time, each edge of the roof panel will go into a truss. Repeat the previous steps for the next four trusses and eight roof panels. With the help of another person, lift the other gable up onto the back wall and secure with the hardware. Add the final two roof panels using the same method as the first two roof panels. Starting at the front of the shed, take the roof cap labeled AGG and secure it to the gable. Next, take the roof cap labeled AFY, overlap the previous roof cap, and secure it to the truss and panels.
Repeat this process with the roof caps labeled AFY working your way down the shed. The final roof cap going to the end of the shed will be labeled AFW. Take a skylight and fold it in half, put it through the hole in the roof, line up the tabs and the holes, and secure with the hardware. Repeat this process for the six remaining skylights. Take the window panel and remove the plastic film from both sides. Insert the window into the frame, making sure that the lip at the top of the window is facing out. Add the screw to the hole at the bottom. Add the latches to these holes above the window, making sure to keep the hardware loose because you want them to slide freely. Take the wall hooks and insert them into these recesses throughout the shed. Follow this link here to see how to properly level your doors. We've already done that, so we're going to move on to the next section. This section will go over how to properly anchor your shed to your foundation. Since we're inside, we're not going to be able to do that, but it's important that you do. So refer to your instruction manual in section 14 to see how to properly anchor your shed. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your lifetime 8 by 17 and a half foot outdoor storage shed. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.